Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how we can insert a logo into our little fan here. This is from our upcoming series, Introduction to Substance Painter, and the asset has been made by the very talented Simon Pelikin, who's a modeler at Ubisoft. So this asset here has a logo, which is right here. And we are as going- As you can clearly tell. As you can clearly <laughs> tell. <laughs> and we're gonna be showing you two ways of doing this. One is a more uh, destructive way, and one is a less destructive way. So this revolves around making a fill layer and masking it out. So we are gonna be doing that, make a fill layer and call this logo. It's important to name your layers right away because otherwise you're in a world of pain. You're totally gonna to forget. You're totally gonna forget. Just, you, you might be like, no, 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 I won't forget. Yeah. I'll, I'll just do it afterwards. No, you Famous forget. last words. <laughs> <laughs> and then we make um, the base color here something dark. The, this logo is, uh, is, 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 is pretty dark. There isn't really any color in this at all. But one thing you wanna keep in mind whenever you're texturing is nothing is really black like even if you're doing like charcoal it's still not fully black no so reserve like you keep this range from not fully bright to not fully dark and never keep it fully dark unless you're texturing like vanta black crazy yes. material exactly then you texturing know vanta black. But it's always good when you're texturing to stay away from the extremes yeah just because it, it's harder to render stuff that looks as nice yeah so. exactly so now we have we covered everything with black and we essentially just want to mask out an area here so we right click on our on our layer. We hit add a black mask, which is gonna which is gonna make sure that nothing is there because black hides everything. And then we're gonna add a paint layer onto this. Now we can paint whatever we want here. So essentially, what we're doing now now we're painting a little uh, we're painting a little thing here where we're doing it. We're just using a pre made alpha for it. So this is an alpha we we made in Photoshop, and simply just dragged it in. The way you do this, you simply drag from the explorer into um, Painter and you set this to be a texture and then you can use it for whatever. So we are going to be using this on our brush. And the way we do this is we go on our paint layer, go all the way down and we have a little grayscale one. This determines the color. We only have black and white because this is a mask and you don't have access to color. So now we can drag this from uh, the shelf onto here. And now you can see that we now have a little Marelli logo. Now something to keep in mind is by default, this is gonna be set to pen pressure. So when you click now, you know, you don't really control the size of the logo. You're like, why is it so tiny? And you click multiple <laughs> times and it looks terrible. So you're gonna to have to change this up here to no pen pressure, no pressure, and then you click it. You also gotta make sure that you don't have any um, brush softness on it. You can do this by holding control, right mouse button and drag up and down. You can also see these settings down here when you start when you start using these hotkeys. So control, right mouse button, up and down. And we also have all the brush settings up here as well. So if you want to, uh, to change brush hardness, you can change this here. You also gotta make sure that the flow is set to 100 and stroke opacity is set to 100. Spacing doesn't matter at all because we're just doing a single stroke. And then we click and there we go. So currently it's just on top of it. It doesn't feel integrated at all. So what we've got to do, we've got to go to our fill layer and then enable the height and nothing has happened because we haven't done anything. And then we can just set this to go in and out. I want this to go inwards like it's been pressed in. And then um, we can change the roughness of it. Just enable the roughness channel. And then you can set this up and down. So now you can see it's, it's pretty sharp, pretty, pretty sharp reflections. I really prefer to build up my fill layers like this because otherwise I have too much information. If I don't need a metallic, I'm just not going to enable the metallic for it because there is there is just so much stuff going on in my brain and I, I don't have capacity for that. Yeah, just take it one step at a time because if you start to worry about color, height and roughness all at the same time, you're, yeah. it's, it's going to be a lot trickier to texture. World of pain, let me tell you. <laughs> and whenever you're texturing as well, you want to go through and uh, check your different maps individually. Check, go through the base color, go through the height because it's really hard to debug what's happening. Like sometimes stuff just goes crazy and you have no idea what's going on. I had this when I was actually recording the premium tutorial where something was screwing up. I couldn't tell what was wrong, but something looked really wrong. <laughs> but then by just by going through the different channels here, I could see that in that, that case, it was the specular roughness channel. So you can just debug it right away. 
I see this a lot in Painter where people tend to work maybe with all the channels at once and they never inspect individual ch individual channels. I always go in and, and check each individual channel because ultimately a shader is built up from individual maps. And if you control the individual maps, you control the shader. That's also an argument for like just building it up one step at a time instead of trying to speed try to speed things up and, yeah. and do multiple maps at a time. Uh, because troubleshooting becomes harder and it can also be harder to figure out okay what exactly did I paint to make it look like this yeah exactly one of the mantras I had when I've been painting texture painting is uh, slow is fast and it sounds a bit counterintuitive but it means that by doing this slowly doing this one step at a time not rushing it takes it takes a bit more time to get to the final result but it means that you get to it in a methodical fashion there is no mystery variable there is no something has just gone absolutely crazy and you have no idea what's going on you can always just go through it you know you name your layers you know what they're all about so i slow is fast is really one of the methods i'm using when texture painting and then we have a second way of doing this it's so good right now we've uh, done this with a paint layer we can do this with a fill layer as well which is more procedural so if we right click now and add a black mask, now we're back to where we started. The fill layer still has all the same settings like this, the height, the roughness, but we've lost our, our actual logo. So what we can do now is we can go under the, this, the stack here and add a fill layer. Now we can do the same thing here, drag this under the grayscale. And what you're gonna see now is that this here is now being dragged onto the entire UVs. <laughs> so if we hit F1, now we can clearly see what's going on. Now this has just been moved over. This is a fairly fairly new feature of Painter where you can actually access the gizmo. So now we can move this down. If you hold control and shift, we can now move this down. This is why I'm advocating for still for doing proper UVs, even though you're painting in 3D and you can do a bunch of stuff with triplaners. Yeah. You can you can you now just have really good control over this. So what this is particularly uh, good for when you're placing logos like yes, this. <laughs> exactly. Because now you, we know exactly where stuff is, you know, at least if you laid out the logo. So what you have to do, you have to disable the tiling because right now it's set to repeat, so you know, it's tiling all across. So now we can see exactly where it is. And because I did the UVs, I know exactly where this guy is. It's up here. That would be embarrassing. If, uh... That would be pretty embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this way we also make sure that it's pretty straight on if we if we want that, you know. So it's, it's a lot easier to just control this instead of having to like trying to be precise with the brush. Exactly. Um, this is just a super nice way of doing it. Yeah, I, I really prefer prefer this because you have you have a lot more a lot more control, but also uh, because you um, you can replace the logo. Yeah. And the other one, if you want to replace the logo with something else, maybe the font change or whatever change to it, now suddenly you can't really do that. But with this approach, you just drag and drop it into the grain scale slot of the fill layer and you're good to go. This obviously only works if your, your UVs are done properly and they don't go across multiple shells. So keep that in mind. So yeah, this is just a very quick, quick and easy way of adding a logo to our little fan. Pretty nice and easy. We um we have the the full series coming out pretty soon, so stay very tuned for soon. that. We promise it's very soon. Yeah, now. whenever <laughs> whenever that might be, <laughs> we'll get to it pretty quickly. But yeah, make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future, and also turn on your notifications so you get notified every time we put out a video. Thanks for watching.